Hello and welcome to Chinivision. This time, it's Portable Spectrum Gaming. I can't have been the only person watching the Vega Plus fiasco unfold. The device is nearly a year late now. Perhaps it will be delivered. Perhaps it won't be. One thing I do know is the Indiegogo campaign comments are at about 14,000 comments so far, with 20 or so being posted every day, people demanding their money back, and the entire thing looks like a complete mess. There are still people out there defending the project. I mentioned it on Twitter the other day and got uh, pulled up by one person saying I shouldn't be biased against the uh, people producing it. But I'm afraid it does look like, and I'd be, I'd love to be proved wrong, that the thing will never be delivered. Now, there's myriad reasons why crowdfunding campaigns, and even computers back in the 80s, that were promised and were never delivered. And... One of the reasons that was, was over-ambitious projects that wanted and needed lots of custom hardware and moulding and things like that that made it complex. One of the things Alan Sugar said when he was looking around scoping out how to produce his home computer is that he didn't want any custom chips inside the CPC because when he got into that area, that's when things began to go wrong, which is why I believe if you were wanting to produce a portable spectrum, you'd do two things. Firstly, you wouldn't restrict it to just a Spectrum because we all saw the adverts for the Game Park years ago in Retro Gamer um, when it first came out that could run anything from the Mega C64 CPC Spectrum. Surely you'd produce something Sinclair branded that had a Sinclair interface on it but that could run anything. And secondly, you wouldn't do lots of custom hardware. What you'd do is you'd ring up an electronics company in Shenzhen, China and say, hey lads, what kind of electronics can I get for $30, $40 a piece, perhaps? Um, can you do me a bit of custom molding, put a Sinclair logo on there? Um, and we'll, we'll write a custom a custom operating system, a custom front end for Android. We stick it on there and we'll sell that as the portable spectrum. Well, the fact is, if you're laying £100 down on a Vega Plus, that's quite a lot of money for an Android device because... I started to look around eBay at the things that were available for £100 or less. And I didn't start doing things like looking at Alibaba and cheaper devices on there. I wanted something that would turn up a couple of days after I ordered it. It was really simple and really cheap. So I started looking around on eBay and I found this. The Wikipad. That was £59 and Morgan Computers. And yes... I think that is the Morgan computers who used to do those flies in the 90s and early 2000s with all the excess stock 486s and Pentiums and things that they used to sell. I think it's the same people. But I've ordered this up. I'm going to turn this into a portable retro gaming console. The specification of this thing is, well, it has a 7-inch screen. It has controllers built in. You can pull the touchscreen in and out. Uh, you can put your own SD card in up to 32 gigabytes. It has five point multi-touch functionality and it has a 1.4 gigahertz processor and a 1280 by 800 screen. Now I know that spec isn't stunning by modern standards, but remember we're thinking cheap and we're thinking retro gaming. You don't need the latest state of the art device to run retro game emulators. You just want something that looks good, can run the emulators at a proper speed and hopefully this device will fit the bill. As I say, it was £59. So this arrived this afternoon. I have opened it up to charge a device, but no more than that. So let's uh, let's go and see what we've got inside here. So I've only opened this up to charge it. I've not looked at anything else. Um, I've just took, taken a punt on this on eBay and to try and hopefully prove this is easy, or perhaps it's all going to end with tears on my face. I don't know, egg on my face, rather. I'm just going to put box over there. So I've got a nice, it's like a shoe box, isn't it? Um, in here. And what we got in here? Oh, tissue paper. And there's the device. That's what, as far as I got earlier, I popped that out, stuck a USB-C uh, connector into it. Is it USB-C? I think it is. And charged it. And that was it. And popped it back in the box. Didn't turn it on. Didn't do anything with it. So we got some, got that there. All very nice. Got some dust on it, it? so it's got a protector on there. A um, bit more foam there, and what we got under here? Right, so we got 
that looks like the controller bit that goes around the edge, a kind of PlayStation, Xbox type button arrangement. There, um, Wikipad start guide. I've got some cleaning cloth and things like that in there. Mains adapter or part of a mains adapter. Um, right. Uh, USB cable there to charge your thing with, same as I used earlier on. Um, which is good, you've got a power adapter. I mean, all those people with their fancy Nintendo mini doodars, they didn't get a power adapter and they're paying a lot more than £50 for their SNES box things that only play SNES games. Is that a... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Pride comes before fall. Um, it's got an American power supply. Oh, no, it goes 100 to 240. Is that your... What's that? I've got no idea. American or European or somewhere. Um, goodness knows. Um, we've got a... Ah, right, okay. We've got some kind of interface there that turns it into a British thing. That's good. That's good. Um, and... Yeah, we've got the... Um, the big doodah, the... That's going to be a bit bigger than the Vega, isn't it? But even so, you've got a bigger screen, and you can use that as a separate tablet. What I'm going to do with this device, by the way, um, is I'm going to unbox it today and get it turned on, <clears throat> and just give some and just give some first impressions. Then I'm going to install some emulators and live with it. Now, you'll say to me, Chini, you hate emulation. Well, emulation has its place, and clearly there's a demand for portable retro gaming. You can't just take your Sinclair Spectrum Plus 3 out on the road with you. Um, it's bulky, it requires a lot of batteries, and you need a screen for it. It would just be a mess. If you're going on a holiday and you don't take your retro gaming collection with you, you're going to have to emulate somehow. I do it when I go on holiday, so other people will do as well. And the question is, what's a good solution? Because you could play it on your phone or your iPad, but you haven't got this controller thing. That's the thing that appeals about devices like the Vega Plus, um, or the proposed device, um, that it's got proper controllers on it. So you can actually play fairly well. It has not a keyboard, but the advantage of this course is you could plug a keyboard in, in theory. So I'm going to play around with this and uh, report back on how it goes. But first of all, let's, let's just plug it in and get some first impressions. So here we are. This is the device itself. Um, it looks like a small iPad, but it's an iPad mini, isn't it? You can get, looks a bit like this. How am I going to do the very satisfying? Peeling that off, actually observing what this says on the front there. Okay, it says, don't put your screen uh, tablet section into your Wikipad thing um, upside down. So I have to get that right. So that presumably slots in like yay. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Um, that feels a bit plasticky, this outer thing. The, the tablet itself feels absolutely fine. Um, the outer device, because it's empty, in effect. Um, but it looks like a big Sega Game Gear. Wow. And they've got st stereo speakers on the front. I wonder what they sound like. But... Um, we turn it on. I'm gonna. What I have to do is turn the lights off. I think, and then we turn it on, and see what it does. Actually, let's have a look at this this thing first. Actually, because I got triggers. What are you gonna need that for on Spectrum games? I don't know, but um, uh, I don't know. You could play. I presume they're redefinable. Um, you could do stuff on that. You got again a little bit plasticky on there. It's weird because the tablet itself feels quite well built, but this outer casing does feel. A little bit cheaper, that said, £50. Um, I don't know how to, out of date this device is. Because Morgan are selling it, I'm guessing it's a few years old. I did see 2013 printed on the back of the box. Um, of course, devices can be produced for a few years and a copyright date. You know, it's just a copyright date. So I don't know. Um, but again, it doesn't matter because, yes, you can go in 2017 and buy a better spec tablet and pay a lot more money, two hundred and fifty, three hundred pounds for some of the gaming tablets, but you're playing Spectrum, Commodore 64, Amstrad, VIC-20, Amiga ST games. You do not need a state-of-the-art device 
to do this. It's all about functionality and does this thing do what it promises? Right, so I've turned the lights off and it still hasn't been on. I haven't turned this thing on yet. You're in the dark now, by the way, because I'm going to turn the screen on, hopefully. I'll probably have to do a little bit of adjustment. We can turn it on. Hold it down. Hello. Ha. Ah, you have to hold it down quite a long time for it to start up. What's it doing? I'll adjust the camera. If you can see anything at all at the moment. Um, I don't know if you can. It's booting, it's doing something, it's displaying a box. And we got some instructions here. There's a little bit of a setup to do, so I'm not going to bore you with all this. It's going to be the usual Android setup. So I'm just going to run through that and uh, we'll come back in a second. So what it looks like we've got here, and I've just done the installation process, it's very quick and easy, is a very standard Android install. I've not used Android for a long time. I used to have a Samsung tablet before I replaced it with an iPad and I didn't really get along with it. But it looks like this thing's come along a long way since then. You can control it with the buttons on the uh, external device here, the control device, if you want to. You can also swipe your finger over the screen. The screen's a little bit grippy. It's not smooth like an iPad. It's just kind of, there's a bit of resistance there. I, I don't know if it's intentional or it's, it's just some coating on there when it's new. I've peeled the thing off, so it's clearly not that. Um, but it looks like a kind of bare bones Android device that what I'm going to do is install a load of emulators on here and then see how it runs. So, so far, all I can surmise is the device looks okay. The control section there feels a little bit cheap, but you've got all these wonderful buttons here. You've got a big screen and overall the device is easy to install easy to get hold of and very very cheap for 59 pounds so i'm going to live with this device for a few weeks install my emulators see what the battery life is like and how it plays and then i'm going to produce part two which will follow this video in a few days